All right, so we are live. It's been a while. We try to be more consistent. Welcome to the kickback. As you see, I don't know if you noticed, but the shirt I'm rocking today is uh, <laughs> from a near and dear friend. So, you know. Um, hey, man. That's what's up. <laughs> yeah, man. So, if you like this shirt here, you know where to get it from. This man. To this side of me or wherever side you gonna be on yeah, with the yeah, recording, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Soli. Um, but yeah, so we want to jump right into this. Um, I know everybody might have been hearing about the move Deion Sanders have made. Now, disclaimer, guys, before we get into this, I got my son in the background, so he wanna chime in. He's on the controls, he's a producer of this episode. So but anyway, um Deion Sanders power move or greed. Um, he recently took up a contract with um, Colorado uh, College uh, football team um, for, what, $29 million. Um, and apparently, I don't know if they correct me if I'm wrong, um, this previous contract was roughly around three hundred k with, the, um, with the, um, the Jackson, the Jackson College. Um, so it was yeah. like a pretty Jackson much State. like a H. Yeah, so it was a HBU. Um, if you don't know what that means, that means just black college. Um, so he recently uh, depart from that job and took up the Colorado job. And a lot of people are torn on why he moved or was it a power move or was it just simply greed? Um, a lot of people on different stances of it have different opinions. We're here to shed some light on our views on it. I'm going to go ahead and hand it over to Sol Lee. I just want to hear a little bit what his views, uh, what your views are on and where you stand and what you believe, um, was it a good decision or was it, was it not? Pass it to you. <clears throat> um, I think that, I think the, uh, the man had to leave, you know, <laughs> and um, you know, everybody, everybody is, um, you know, does their own thing and everyone tries to make a come up, you know, um, and wants to wants to you know improve and get to a higher level. Being that mm -hmm. he was being that he was at an HBCU didn't mean that he had to stay at an HBCU. You know, um, the the that's a black man. You know, first, and being that he went to another college still doesn't mean that doesn't make it him not black. You know, <laughs> and not care about the culture. He's just trying to improve on. Um, or get to a higher level of where he is now, you know, um, especially um, maybe financially. I know a whole lot of people that's, you know, that's not happy with their, their finances or their salary and stuff like that. And they want to make a move themselves. But you, we can't get mad at this man for, you know, for taking another job. I mean, come on. <laughs> I agree. I agree. I think, I think it's a two-way street. I think it's, uh, it's two sides of the coin. Mm -hmm. I think we as um, African Americans, we tend to believe that, um, it's a tough one to say, but we tend to believe that if we depart from something that an infrastructure that we build, to go on to another infrastructure that's not of our own, you are looked upon as um, uh, a sellout. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So you looked at like a sellout. You looked at like you left your 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 culture behind because of a choice you made. And I I, I can see the p political side of it, but the real mm -hmm. side of it all is just in general. There have been jobs that we all have been on that we've been working for years and we mm -hmm. yeah, create friendship, brotherhood, sisterhood, close bonds, close knit families in a sense to where we've been, you know, almost like relatives, you know, and yep. we had to leave that job for whatever, whatever the reasons are, whether it's better uh, hours or uh, more pay or just better um, opportunities, whatever the case is we had to depart for something that was better for ourselves. A lot of times people don't agree with our choice 
and may see it as a different um, light than we see it in. But, I mean, I like to believe D.R. Dunn, he was with the school, to my knowledge, for three years, with the mm-hmm. HBU for three years. So he he put it in time. He put him on a map. Um, to my knowledge, the team wasn't widely known before he got there, and now they're they're pretty much um, – pretty popular now um they made headway, headway made some um um definitely made their way to sports center in a couple of segments and they definitely got the spotlight and attention which is what the the end game for a lot of colleges a lot of small colleges especially they want to, the exposure because the more exposure the more likely their chances are with drafts and mm-hmm. people wanting to attend their schools so i mm-hmm. think he definitely gave them the publicity that they needed in a good light um as far as giving them a winning record making them um, um, winning some great games, um, some uh, milestones, and and instilling into them the knowledge he knows about the game. So I think he's done a great deal there. I don't think he necessarily owed anyone anything. I think, you know, if he felt like I've done all I could or all I need to, this chapter is done, then we have to respect that. Um, uh, Just how it would be on any side of the coin, whether you leaving a job, whether you're leaving mm-hmm. a career or city, um, departing from family, departing from loved ones, divorce, whatever the case is, everybody make choices that are better for them, and it may not be something everybody largely agree with. So, right? Yeah, and yeah. And, and you you really don't know what was going on behind the scenes, you know, because all all you know is he 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 picked up his stuff and left, you know, um, but. Like people don't know what actually went down behind him leaving, or like why did he why did he make his mind mind up to leave? What helped him make his mind up to leave? You know, um, uh, from my understanding, it was it was a couple of things that that happened there, and um, and maybe that could have been the catalyst. That, that was like okay, forget it, I'm, I'm gone. You know, but um, but I think we we be so quick to judge, you know, and um. But, but don't really know what's going on half the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I agree with that. I think it's just to where we have to see the bigger picture, mm-hmm. and I think we sometimes don't understand the bigger picture. And like I said, it's two sides of a coin because one side could be well, he could have stayed with that school, and he could have really continued to build with that school to continue to um, uh, form them into a, a powerhouse school and that would have been his success story that would have been a historical story a story for the record books especially for um um and within the in the, the black community um that hey he 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 didn't take the bigger payout he stuck with the team he had faith in them he stuck it out i mean and that's a cinderella story that disney and a lot of these movies and family heartfelt films kind of uh perpetuate and that's not always the case in real life. It is, you see it a lot in these movies where somebody gets the big job they always wanted from the start of the movie, and mm-hmm. then they finally found some reason to where, hey, I don't want this job no more because I found happiness here. No, that's not real life. That's not real life, especially when you got family to feed and obligation to uphold. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I've seen it. You see it time and time again in these movies where somebody wanted to be a, a, a head coach for an NBA team, but the enemy coaching a small minor team. But then midway through the movie, they offer the NBA contract they always wanted. They turn on, take the contract, and they turn around and say, you know what? I'm going back to this small 2A school in mm-hmm. Minnesota that nobody knows about. And I'm going to do that. No, that's just not, that's not reality. You know, mm-hmm. and it's because at the end of the day, he got a lifestyle. He got a pole. He's no longer playing basketball or football. Sorry. sorry. He's no longer playing football anymore. You know, he's not the the um, prime time on the field anymore. So he mm-hmm. got to keep that brand um, stable. In order to keep that brand stable, you got to do something to can continue to fuel that income. So if that $29 million was what it was, then so be it. But we really got to let this play out and see how it goes, you know, but, um, yeah. before. Yeah, yeah, not, not but, but. <laughs> Mm-hmm. You know, Brett, Brett stole all that money. Mm-hmm. And that's getting swept under the rug. But now we going after our own people, like, for taking mm-hmm. a job. 
like there's actually a come up. Like if we ain't saying nothing about you no know, Brett Favre and what he did, you know, mm-hmm. like that that's the part that doesn't make sense to me. Like how you gonna get mad at Dion for taking um another job that pays more and do this and do that? Like why not be happy for that brother? But you ain't mm-hmm. said you ain't gave that same energy towards Brett Favre. They did all this and stole from that stole from whatever to get something else, but didn't take it. You know, he, he didn't earn it. He stole it. He did. He did. Like, where's that same energy with us, though? I don't understand. I think. I think. Man, like I'm going to trade carefully here. Uh, so I think to answer that is to where it's not uncommon for um, someone of um, Brett Favre's um, culture. Yes, to um, to steal. Mm-hmm. So, and I don't mean that in a in a, in a way of attack, but it's it's not front page news. You just mm-hmm. had. A celebrity, like a, a famous actress, about five, six years ago, committed committed fraud, mm-hmm. college fraud, mm-hmm. for her girl to go to her daughter to go to a, a, a Ivy League school, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and committed college fraud. I mean, they embezzled money and not embezzled, but they kind of, you know. So mm-hmm. that's that's every day for that. You know, that's but, that's not a surprise. However, right. though, mm-hmm. however. Yes, I do agree. Not us as being outraged, but the media in general should be just as outraged mm-hmm, mm-hmm. with Brett Favre as they are. And they shouldn't be. It shouldn't be equal. It should be one guy is taking a better position in life. He's not breaking any law. He's not stealing any money. He's not doing that malicious. He's literally taking a better opportunity. And another man is literally stealing money. So no, they shouldn't be on the same plateau. One should be Yo, that is wrong. And hey, man, I I may or may not disagree, but um, I'm happy for you, and I wish you the best of luck. But mm-hmm. it's not. So he's demonized, and you know how media work. Media mm-hmm. is gonna focus on what they want to focus on to take heat off something else. So you better believe it's very calculated that Brett Favre is not in that light mm-hmm. as he should be, mm-hmm. because hey, prime time. It's more of a popular figure because he's more relevant. Brett Favre had been relevant since the early 2000s, you know. Right. So this 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 news coverage is not a hot take. It is not going to get the traction we want. So we're going to find prime time, and we're going to make traction on him and make him the headline. And that's unfortunate because all the brother wanted to do was do what was best for him and his family. Yeah, but why? But why make prime time prime time? when you got Brett Favre on all these um, commercials and Wrangler or Levi, whatever, you know, and <laughs> all these mm-hmm. other commercials, you know, Dion ain't on, ain't on all that, you know? Mm-hmm. So it's, I don't know, man, it's the media, the media is something else. And I don't know, bro. I, I mean, mean it's, a, it's, a, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. And not to jump off topic of that, but just speaking of media, it's mm-hmm. the same thing with um Kyrie. Right. I mean, Kyrie made his statements on his stance on just trying to find his true heritage or our as an African American, our true heritage, where we came from, and trying to learn who we are. Mm-hmm. And he was attacked because he shared a documentary that wasn't so kind on a particular set of people. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna mention names because I don't want nobody to try to take my contract with Soli, Superman, mm-hmm. anything like that. Or try to take my Nike deal that I'm coming up on, so I don't want them to take. Or try our to keep contracts. up with some shows, yeah, please. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't want to take our contracts that we have, my Netflix contract. So, with that being said, um, I think as to where media is pretty much controlled by a higher collective, that if it's beneficial towards our cause, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna push for it. If mm-hmm. it's gonna anywhere hurt our cause or take away from our cause, then we're not gonna cover it. For example, the Balenciaga whole thing with the whole child bondage, 
which is very, very disturbing, by the way, like mm -hmm. in any fashion of the form, no matter what walk of life you're from, whether you're out of touch with society or out of touch with the intercommunity, if you got common sense, you know, a child and child bondage is like, come on, man, that's not even, you know better, you know, good and damn well, that's not a good idea. You sit in that, in that, in that, in that room and you mm -hmm. came up with that ad and they do, so y'all know, they do sit in a room where they come up with ideas for a promotional ad, what's going to get traction, they vote on it, their project, they did not something they just came up with, I know where, oh, my bad, no, they planned on that. It was detailed. If you see the picture, it was very detailed on how they laid everything out. They knew what they was doing, but they got too cocky, and that's the problem. These people that's in mm -hmm. our places get too arrogant and doing what they do, and they think no one's going to call them on it because they have so much power. And when people like Kanye called them, because think about it, if Kanye would have never said anything, you would have never heard anything about it. You probably would have seen the ad, but you probably wouldn't have thought twice about it because you just, you just not, not programmed to think that way. But being that somebody say, hey, look at this, this is related to this and this is, and then you would have been like, oh, wow, that is crazy. So, and it's crazy that he's the only celebrity that's speaking out about it and speaking mm -hmm. on people who's for the community and for the culture. There's a lot of, quote unquote, African-American celebrities who for us, who haven't spoken on the matter at all, which is mm -hmm. surprising because you make on music, make songs about how you do it for the people. You make interviews, how you do it for the people. No, you don't. You're, you have the same dog leash that everybody else had that Kanye West was speaking on. And you wanted to speak, you truly indeed wanted to speak, but they pulled that dog leash. And that dog leash is connected to all that money and all them contracts and all them deals you had, so you couldn't speak on it which is related to how Sports Center made a whole segment on bashing Kanye and bashing Kyrie for just having an opinion. And all these African-American brothers who made these comments, the same African-American brothers made the comments by Deion Sanders, they all are under the same payroll. So you better believe they handed a script and said, look, if you don't talk about this or you don't push this brother down, we're going to take away this check from you. We're going to take this check and with the, hey, you, you, you don't want to talk about it? All right. Or you want to? And that's mm -hmm. how it is. And it's sad because people like Kanye, people like Kyrie, people are, are starting to really pull the veil back. And, right. a, and like Dion said, just like you said, and I'm saying that because it's connected right back to Brett Favre. Just like you stated, he was stealing. That's illegal. He was that he should do jail time for that. If that was an average joke, they'd be in jail already. Since it's already serving their time already. The problem is he's not because of obvious reasons. But the thing is, I mean, I'm not saying obvious reasons. Don't nobody come up here and say, "Oh, you saying because he's white?" No, that's partial of it. But the point I'm making is, is just you are not a big enough fish for us to throw out here. We need a bigger distraction. And that's why Deion Sanders literally taking a better job as front page news. Why? I have no idea. If anything, it should be congratulations. Thank you for what you've done. But it's not. It's actually demonizing his brother just for trying to secure the bag. And that's mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Hey, I agree, bro. I agree. So so hopefully, hopefully, um, well, I know we, we know Dion to get through this. Um, like he has everything else, you know, all his other heels, you know. Um, but yeah, man, I think I think we're just gonna have to um I don't know, man. It's it, it's hard, it's hard to say because we it's something that we can't we cannot be there for each other, you know. Um like well, I know it's not like how I would like for us to be because <laughs> Uh, you know, it's a it's a bigger situation than just, than just me, but um, yeah, man, I just wish we would, you know, just be happy for and and especially the media, man. The media is just terrible, but I guess that's how it goes. It's the rules of the games, I guess. Yeah, it's just core agenda. It's all agenda. Every just so people know, everything has an agenda. Mm -hmm. Everything that happens. And it's, and it's, I'll just give you a little tip. Anything that happens in this widespread media coverage on it, there's an agenda. Mm. Simply put, no, it's not a conspiracy. It's common sense. Two plus two, always going to equal four. 
So the problem is when I see, and a lot of us starting to see now, when you see a media coverage on something like Will Smith slapping Chris Rock or the entanglement or, or, or something else, you know, it's like, this is not important enough to be everywhere. Something yeah. else is going on. Something mm-hmm. else is happening. And you're trying to feed us mm-hmm. this uh, drama to distract us from whatever else is going on. This yeah. ain't a big enough situation here for it mm-hmm. to be everywhere. You know, like it shouldn't be on CNN. They shouldn't mm-hmm. talk about this on Good Morning America. Why mm-hmm. is this on Good Morning America? It's not that serious. Right. So, and, 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 and like I said, Dion taking another job shouldn't be that serious. Like coaches take different jobs all the time. Like, good Lord, man, you know, so. Right. right. <laughs> like, the, Tom Brady literally had a choice. And that's my guy. He's in the background. He literally had a choice. You want to be home with your wife and kids, or you want to go out and play football. He looked at them wife, his wife and them kids and said, hell with y'all. I'm going here and play football and left the ass. A white man left his family to play football, but let a brother just just have anything close to it. Let a brother get a massage to get a happy ending. Oh, God, his whole career is over with. Right. So it's like, this, yeah. you know, it's, uh, yeah. so it, it, it's just one of those things. It's like you choose who to demonize. You choose who to point fingers at. You choose who. And it's like, all right, you know, that's why I don't really pay attention to a lot of these, these, these news articles or these news outlets because it's all controlled by who they want to demonize. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's just it's just sad. It's sad. Um, you know, but I wish Deion Sanders the best. I do, however, wish he would have stuck it out with an uh, HBU. But I mean, I completely understand his choice and his reasonings because hey, what's best for you may not be what we think is best for you. Mm-hmm. So you know, I cannot shame a man for trying to do what's best for his family. That that to me, you you can't consider yourself a man or let alone a grown functional adult if you kind of shame somebody for trying to do what's best for them. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I agree, bro. Yeah. So, um, another note before we wrap up, because we try to make these episodes short now. We try to hit the 30 mark so people, so that way you don't have to feel like you're watching a movie. Um, there's new news that's out. Um, Miss Brittany has been uh, has been transfer uh, transferred back to the states. Uh, a famous um, NBA, uh, WNBA player who has been incarcerated in Russia uh, for some time has been um, released into American custody um, in exchange for a Russian arms dealer. Now a lot of people are up in arms about, wow, a WNBA player for a Russian arms dealer, America, what are you doing? Um, so a lot of people are on different sides of that. A lot of people I see that's kind of like going down my timeline. Y'all are really giving them all the pieces to their puzzle, to all the pawns, to their game, to really beat us at whatever they try to do. But I'm going to go ahead and put it out here in the atmosphere. Russia, America, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I, again, I support all my troops, all the soldiers that are putting their lives on the line. Uh, my hearts are with you, and I support you all to the utmost fullest. This is not intended or towards you all you all just following orders that's given to you okay let's put it out there but however america never wanted that smoke with russia so before the arms deal or after the arms deal so please don't make this one man seem like he's like iron man to the avengers like you like right, guys let's assemble and it's going to come to america and just wreak havoc like no that's not going to happen people relax you know um Brittany, Granted, that exchange was kind of odd, but I'm glad she's back in American custody because, bro, it really wasn't that serious to have that girl over there going through all that because of having a vape. They had her in a, a prison camp. I'm talking about the shit you see on TV where, you know, they got the dirty, smug faces and they on a railroad. Like, they literally had her out there, you know what I'm saying, in those conditions, you know what I'm saying? And that wasn't cool. However, Crime is a crime, right is wrong. You know, right is right, wrong is wrong. However, I just think, you know, it's a bit extreme. So I'm glad she's back over at the state side. So hopefully she can work something out to where she can get her freedom back. And, um, you know, and but obviously we know it's what midterms is coming. 
um, political reasons, as I told you all, everything has an agenda. Biden is trying to win over the black folk again, y'all. So he got Britney back, so he's gonna be like, hey, look what I did for y'all. No, you didn't, brother. You did not do this for us at all. You did this for your, your own reasoning. So is it a power move or is it greed? Believe it. So with that being said, I let y'all marinate on that. Y'all discuss that and whatever you want to say. I pass it to Soli so we can wrap up and whatever his take on that is. Oh shoot, my takes, man, my take on on that situation is like, man, we got we got so many people here. Um like my brothers, sisters, it's like that's in jail, in prison here. They didn't even do half as much as, you know, <laughs> as what they got, you know, booked for. And um like like I wasn't a, a fan of hers in the first place. So I can't I can't be like, well damn, I bring her home, bring her home, you know, like like I knew her like that. I knew she was a, she's a WNBA player, but it but it wasn't like one of my things that I thought about, like, damn, yeah, we gotta bring Brittany home. You know, it was it was just one of them things like, dang, she, she's over there. Um dang, I, I wonder how I wonder how Dre doing that's locked up in, you know, <laughs> downtown mm -hmm. or, you know, mm -hmm. or I wonder how many years he going to get, you know, he waiting, you know, for his sentence, you know, um, he didn't do that much. You know, I, I, I be thinking like that. But um, so it, it I really, it's, it was one of them, them toss up things for me with, with Brittany. Um, she got out. Great. Um, that's what it is. <laughs> Basically, and what he's trying to say is that that's good she got out, but what about the folks over here right. that need to help? And I mean, that's true. It's true. I mean, they've been trying to bring Larry, Larry Hoover home for the longest, like, you know. So I just, again, everything has an agenda. She was part of that puzzle. She was part of that pond, you know. So, you know, it, it's just, um, I agree. I think um, it's ironic the same man in office Cre help create a crime bill that put people like Dre in jail for having a little bit of weed, a little bit of marijuana. And then in terms during your election run or your presidential run, you say, hey, I'm going to relax those same charges. Mm -hmm. So that's like you put that, <laughs> you put that uh, obstacle before us to stumble us and then wait it so everybody forget and then remove it like you've done something special. No, you put it in the beginning with, you know, yeah. and that's part of the whole political thing, you know, is, is you know, they, they'll put something in a way to make it like, when I get in office, I'm gonna remove that. No, you shouldn't have put it in the beginning with, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, then Dre or Pookie and nobody probably would have been in jail. They probably, yeah, you know, they would have got, you know, they would have served whatever time appropriate for it, but it wouldn't have been five, 10, 15 years. That's ridiculous, you know? So I'm saying that because all this wraps around political and media. So whatever you want to lay with, if you like, oh, President Biden, is, uh, is I, I vote for him. And that's cool. I'm not here to make nobody sway. I'm just telling you, no matter who's in office, whether it's him, whether it's Obama, whether it's Trump, whether it's The Rock, whoever, it's all still the agenda. So I just say that to say this, man, we got to stay focused on what's going on at home. We got to fix the problems we have in our own houses before we try to go fight wars in somebody else's backyard. That's mm -hmm. all I'm simply saying. That's it. That's it. So close it out, brother. Let us know what's going on. Let us know where to catch you at. Where's your next show? I know where the next show is, but want everybody else to know where the next show is, how to get tickets, how to find you, how to go ahead and get in there and have a good time. Um, so solely in the super band, you, you know, you can reach us at one super band music, um, on Instagram, um, or just type in solely in the super band on Google, whatever. Um, our next show, March 4th, downtown Durham, North Carolina. Um, tickets, um, we, we still trying to talk to them about you know, pre ordering, um, because now it's like you have to show up and get the ticket, you know, mm -hmm. um, but um. Because last time, like plenty of time, we didn't we didn't went out there sold out before. So um, hopefully we do the same thing again. Um, but that's that's our next one, man. March fourth, Durham, North Carolina. 
Soul Eating Superfan. We're doing another James Brown tribute along with some some other top hits, you know, um, from other artists like Shaka Khan, which I won't be doing Shaka Khan and Tina and all that stuff. <laughs> It'll be. Uh, thank you real quick there, Mr. Soli. Uh, I think we may have lost Mr. Soli. Oh, there you go. You're back. Uh, you, you, you were at Shaka Khan. You said you would not be doing Shaka Khan yourself. You say somebody else will be doing it? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so the Black Diamond, my wife, which okay. is also, you know, the leader of the band, too. She'll be doing She'll be doing all the all those type songs, the Tina Turner and, you know, all that stuff. Um, so she has her own show in in the super band show herself. So I'm I'm really excited about that. Um, so um, it's gonna be a great show, man. It's gonna be a great one. Well, that's awesome, man. Well, y'all heard it. Y'all heard it here. Uh, support the brother downtown Durham, North Carolina, on March fourth. Mm -hmm. Um, if y'all want more information from him, you can hit him up on solely in the super band uh, Facebook page. I'm sure. Or yep. you can get him on the, um on his page, which is under solely TR. Um, you can catch him on his page and get more information if y'all want to go and support. Um, the brother do put on great shows. He's a rising star. Um, the best way to support our own is to actually put our money where our mouths at and actually show up. You know, if you're not able to be there, to support him in spirit, share his content, buy his content, um, to, um, to help this brother elevate to that next level. Uh, do not treat him like Deion Sanders now. Let his brother elevate to the to the to the level he needs to get to in life. Um, what I'm doing as of right now, I'm just really regaining my footing on what I'm my direction. I uh, just did a game uh, review for the holiday shopping on YouTube, so you can find that on my YouTube channel, uh, which is K War 2088, um, or just simply Chris Lee. Uh, that's K H R I S L E E as down here on face on um, YouTube rather. So I will be doing more content on game related um, items and I will be doing a review on this game here the Midnight Suns for the Xbox for um it's a Marvel game so I'm gonna start doing more game reviews as well for those who like myself don't have a lot of money to grow on trees they want to make a, the right decision in buying I'm the guy to help you make that decision so outside of that thank y'all for tuning in please stick with us we are people with food this brother's literally famous like so it's hard for us to kind of click together and have the time to put a show together um and sometimes i'm at work you know we do have real lives we're not quite famous yet but when you support us and get us there then we can make episodes every day of the week because <laughs> this is our job now so right now we got to work real jobs until maybe supporters some supporters come in you know yeah <laughs> so um outside of that man Peace, love to all of you, man. Be safe. Enjoy yourself these holidays, man. We out. All right, y'all.